Okay, good morning, uh, Heritage Advisory Committee and uh, any members of the public who are joining us virtually this morning. Uh, my name is Kelly Campo. I am the Director of Corporate Services and Clerk for the Township of South Glengarry and the staff resource for our Heritage Advisory Committee. Um, so thank you to our committee for getting together this morning. This is our first meeting of this term of council, even though we are in the last year um, of the term. We, we have not yet had an opportunity uh, or a project to meet about this term. So I'm happy that uh, we're here today. We've got uh, a project to hear about um, and appreciate everybody taking the time to meet this morning. Now, um, as this is our first meeting of the term, we have not yet elected a chair. So as the staff resource, I'm just going to um, facilitate the meeting until we, uh, we've reached that portion of the meeting. Um, and so I will uh, call the meeting to order. Do I have someone to, uh, to move that? Okay, moved by Stephanie Jaworski, seconded by uh, Penny Cavell, all in favor? Okay, uh, motion is passed. Um, and can I have a motion to approve the agenda? Moved by Stephanie Jaworski, uh, seconder. All seconded. Seconded by Ian McDonald, and the uh, the agenda is accepted. Okay, so um, new business. So first, before we we get into our our presentation from uh, Mr. Todd Laihu, um, we are going to elect a chair for the committee. Um, I see. Oh, Alan, did you have your hand up? Um, no, I, I I I think I hit hand up in the. Oh. <laughs> I, I un unhanded myself. Okay, perfect. So, um, okay, so I believe most of you on the committee were, were involved in the last term of council as well. Stephanie is our new council uh, representative on this committee. So, um, is there anybody who uh, at this time wishes to put their name forward to chair the committee? If we if if we don't if if we don't have a volunteer, I think we would. Can I ask to... if, if Penny would be interested? Well, I, I'm asking if uh, Alan and Ian are people that I know. So, <laughs> well, and we can uh, we can always default to our council representative as well. Um, that's often the case with our committees. Um, the council reps uh, uh, sit as the chair. So, um, Stephanie, oh, if you're could oh. I nominate uh, uh, Stephanie then? Okay, yeah, Stephanie. So uh, would you be uh, uh, c consent to accepting that uh, nomination, Stephanie? I would if really no other members of the committee want the role because I understand, I mean, I am the new kid on the block here and I understand, uh, I mean, Alan, were you not chair the last time? Yes. Or am I, okay, so I mean, certainly if anyone else wants to be chair, I have... Uh, I, I certainly don't don't need to, to to do that role. So feel comfortable to yeah. to put I'm, your hand up if you'd like. The, my thinking is that um, you know you know we're kind of in the latter part of the term, but if this project is going to need some uh, you know a, kind of a contact person, it might be good to have you there. You know while this proceeds, you know. Okay. Just okay, just so... for simplicity too. Right? Sure. So Alan has um, nominated Stephanie Jaworski. Is does uh, so, someone uh, second that nomination? Seconded. Okay, seconded by Ian. Uh, all in favor? Motion is carried. Okay, so uh, Chair Jaworski, I will turn it over to you. However, um, our, our next order of business is our presentation from Todd Laihu. So if you'd like, I can uh, introduce Todd and uh, let him commence his presentation. That, that would be great if you could introduce him and also just make sure that we have the context of, uh, you know, what, what, what's the outcome we would like as before he starts, just so everyone uh, has that in their mind. For sure. So, um, committee, we have Todd Laihu with us today. Todd is the communications coordinator with the United Counties of SDNG. Uh, Todd is spearheading a project with the counties uh, for a historic 
uh, tour, uh, sorry, Todd, uh, the historic plaque tour for SD&G. Um, so a couple of months ago, Todd presented to council about this project and what the counties are looking for is for each of the municipalities in SDNG to recommend uh, three heritage sites where a historic plaque will be designed and installed. And this will be throughout all of the lower tiers, the six, uh, six municipalities in SDNG. So this is a countywide project. And so council upon receiving this delegation um, asked administration, asked staff to uh, convene the uh, heritage committee to get some feedback from the committee uh, before they make that decision as to which sites that uh, that we will identify for the township of South Langary. So we've, uh, we've called this meeting. Uh, Todd is going to present some information to the committee to give you guys an overview uh, of the project and the type of sites that they are looking for. And um, following that presentation, we can have some discussion. Um, if this committee uh, has some ideas that they want uh, to council to consider, um, I will be preparing a report that will go to council for them to, uh, to recommend some of the committee's ideas and then we'll be able to identify those sites for Todd. Um, and before I turn things over to Todd, actually, I should also introduce our Director of uh, Parks, Recreation and Culture, Sherry Lynn Servage. Okay. Um, uh, most of you uh, may not have had the opportunity to meet Sherry Lynn yet. She started with the township this past summer. Um, and so she's joining us today as uh, part of her role involves culture, um, and township owned properties. So um, Sherry Lynn is here as well as a staff resource. Welcome uh, Sherry. <laughs> Thank you. Hello everyone. So, yeah. <laughs> so I'll turn things over to, to Todd for his presentation and I uh, look forward to some discussion afterwards. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Kelly. And, and thank you, uh, Madam Chair as well and, and the committee for the opportunity to speak with you uh, today. Um, uh, full disclosure, we're just getting over a little bit of uh, uh, COVID, so my voice might crack a, a little bit and I might have to have some water, uh, but that's okay. So uh, um, uh, with your permission, uh, uh, Madam Chair, uh, I can share my screen and, and just take everybody through a, uh, a little update in terms of uh, what the project is all about. Okay, I think everybody can see this. Yes. Great. Um, so uh, um, as uh, Kelly mentioned, uh, uh, what we're uh, doing is, is uh, SDG is looking to create a, a, an, or an SDG based historic tour with three plaques in, in each of the six local municipalities in SDNG. Uh, our hope is that these plaques will be installed in, in clusters and areas where there's high visibility and, and foot traffic. And the tour really is gonna complement other plaques and hubs located in the region. <laughs> already in place in, in local municipalities. Uh, we have uh, six plaques at the Lost Villages Museum in South Stormont, uh, as well as the commercial and waterfront districts in the city of Cornwall. Uh, and really the, the tour will serve as a vehicle for expanding the quote unquote, where Ontario began brand throughout the county uh, counties. Full disclosure, um, I was a, uh, um, uh, prior to taking this position with the county, I, I was the executive director of an agency called Heart of the City in Cornwall and we completed this type of a, of a project in Cornwall and the goal with the project was always to branch out beyond municipal borders outside of Cornwall and, and really create a regional tour and uh, when I accepted the position at, at the county and, and uh, late last year we were kicking around some ideas about uh, how to uh, expand this this branding um, we had a, a very robust discussion about uh, expanding this tour and the uh, county uh, saw value in that and that resulted uh, in my presentations to the local municipalities. So at its meeting of October 18th, County's Council was briefed on this project and provided tacit support to proceed. Um, the goal is to uh, have the, the project continue with presentations before councils uh, of local municipalities. We've done all of that. I've been to all six uh, municipalities and our, our timeline uh, subsequent to that is uh, we will have research preparation and production of the plaques that will take place over uh, fall, winter and spring of 2021, 2022. And I need the plaques uh, to be completed by the end of this year. 
uh, the counties have identified $50,000 uh, in terms of a budget to, uh, for this uh, project. So we're not going to local municipalities and asking really for any money. Uh, but what we are asking for are, are, are partnerships and uh, the ability to liaise with local experts and get some content to, to place on these plaques. And, and really, that's why we're, we're here right now. Uh, the project has the potential to create multi-layered partnerships. Those partnerships include SDNG, obviously, it's local municipalities, historical societies, uh, even local businesses and, and community-based organizations. And of particular importance will be uh, fostering relationships with local historical societies, or in this case, um, heritage committees, uh, who will be an important resource when it comes to collecting materials, photos, and, and other content for the plaques. Um, our goal is to liaise with local municipalities and, and local historical societies to develop engaging content that tells the stories of value uh, for residents and visitors. Um, and the, really the plaque content consists of a central painting based on historical photos and accounts, uh, as well as verbiage that explains the story behind the artwork. Uh, the plaques uh, will also contain reproductions of old photographs that further illustrate the links uh, to the past. And what's not mentioned here, and I'll mention it just in passing, is that the plaques are also completely bilingual. So they will be in, in both English and French. Uh, in Cornwall, there are spin-offs for this project, uh, and I'll just take you through these briefly. Uh, in Cornwall, we, we created calendars and we created books um, uh, to try and, and market the tour and give it some legs. It will be on the, the unveiling of the plaque so that people would still have an interest. And I can tell you, there's a huge interest. We sold out the books, we sold out the calendars. There really is an appetite for, for local um, um, history in this region. As well as uh, cr creating the plaques, we're also going to create a, a kind of a roster of existing historic plaques throughout uh, the counties, throughout local municipalities. Every local township have plaques depicting or, or marking some kind of historic event. But uh, in generally speaking, nobody knows where these plaques are um, unless you're driving by. So we're going to create a roster so that if individuals are looking for specific plaques or uh, specific uh, areas that denote local history, we're going to have that available uh, and, and easily to, to find. Um, one of the, the pillars of success for this, this project is, is location. Um, the ultimate decision on where these plaques will be located will require the input of our partners uh, within local municipalities. And some key points to remember in terms of location are our traffic. The plaques should be located in, in clusters where people are known to gather in groups. Um, we want to avoid saturation. So if there are already historic plaques in a specific region, and I'm thinking perhaps along the waterfront in Lancaster might be an area to avoid uh, because we don't want to have too much. We don't want to have too many plaques. And then uh, the last uh, uh, area to consider with respect to location is cost. Um, so it's cheaper to attach plaques to um, existing structures. The photos on the left of this slide uh, depict two plaques. Uh, they're uh, attached to a building, that bottom left photo uh, at Lost Villages. Uh, and so instead of having to create or purchase stands and then have those stands um, uh, placed in the concrete or, or sauna tubes as they are in the photo above that, um, that can cost thousands of dollars. But if we just start ordering plaques and a bracket to mount them on a building, it's considerably cheaper. Uh, so next step. So uh, this the particular uh, uh, slideshow was created for uh, municipal councils. Uh, some of the, the um, uh, content is still viable for, for this meeting. Uh, so the purpose of a meeting with local municipal councils was to request support for the project, and, and we've received that. Um, and as I said, the next step now is, is speaking with local experts. In this case, it's the Heritage Committee to really get an idea in terms of uh, what the plaques will include and, and where they should go. Um, so I'm just going to stop this uh, slideshow and I'll just take you briefly through um, another uh, uh, document that I have here. Uh, this was a document that I think you received uh, earlier this week or when you got the agenda package. And, and really, just, it speaks specifically to what the plaques uh, include. Uh, so as I said, the concept is to create three plaques in each of the six local municipalities. Um, we are liaising through partnerships uh, with local municipalities by way of, of the council presentations, and those have all been completed. But what the county needs now is really um, needs input from local historians and, and experts to develop that engaging content that I talked about. Um, and, and really to get some ideas in terms of, uh, of location uh, as well. Uh, and materials to support content include uh, historic photos, newspaper accounts, and, and official documents, um, and, and really any kind of archival information that uh, either the, the Heritage Committee may have or a local historical society may have. That's what we really need. And uh, um, we're hoping to have this, this input and, and this feedback uh, by the end of the month. It's a, a long process. Mm -hmm. 
an artist begins creating the plaque, uh, it takes a long time. And, and as we said, the, the deadline is to have the plaque completed by the end of the year. Um, so it, despite the fact that it's the middle of January, um, uh, we really still are under the gun to have this uh, project completed this year. Uh, this gives you an idea of, of what the plaques uh, contain and, and their sizes. So they're 30 inches tall, uh, they're 40 inches wide. They're, um, um, it's, it's basically an aluminum plate that is then um, uh, wrapped and, and painted with the, the depiction of the, the content for the plaque. Um, the plaques are, are, as I said, anchored by a, a central painting. The paintings are, are based on historic photos or, or accounts uh, of specific events or landmarks located within the local municipalities. What we're trying to avoid at this point is talking about people. Um, and the reason why we're doing that is we could have a hundred plaques if we started to, to mention historic figures because you're always afraid of, of leaving somebody out or missing somebody. So uh, as I said, we're trying to avoid um, talking about specific people and instead we're focusing on, on landmarks or uh, specific events uh, uh, from the past. Um, the, uh, the locations, uh, they, they should or, or must be located on like, either township property or other public lands that are easily accessible by the general public uh, with high foot traffic. Uh, ideally, if, if the plaque is documenting a landmark, the plaque should be located on the same property as the scene being depicted or, or fairly close by, uh, because we found that by, by putting these plaques in specific areas where they're depicting a, a landmark, it gives them an idea, oh, here's what it used to look like back in the day, and, and people kind of enjoy that aspect of the, of the tour. Um, and uh, um, obviously, uh, um, this needs to be taken into account when we're determining uh, plaque content. Um, so, Madam Chair, that's that's the basis of my um, uh, report. Really, what we're looking for from the, the, the committee, if I can highlight three areas, is, is number one, we need to uh, determine content for the three plaques that are, are going to be located in South Glengarry. We need to determine a, a location of, of where these plaques are, are going to be. And uh, um, we need you to connect us with individuals, whether they're members of the committee or perhaps members of the, the local historical society, but we need to be connected with those people so that we can uh, get those historic photographs and we can have those conversations around uh, local history so that we can determine exactly uh, the content we wanna place on, on these plaques. Um, so I've done a lot of talking, <laughs> uh, Madam Chair, uh, but I'd be happy to uh, turn it over to the committee and, and, and have a conversation about uh, uh, what we can do. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Todd, for your presentation. So, uh, so I, uh, yeah, I'd like to open it up to members of the, the committee. Certainly, if you have questions or if you, want, if, or if you already have suggestions or, you know, line of thinking that you want to get out on the table, uh, is there, who would like, is there anyone who would like to go first? Um, oh, so, okay, I see uh, Penny has her hand up, and then I'll go to you, Ian, after. Okay. I just wanted to remind us all uh, from our last term, uh, Glen Gary wrote that many of us were on a two day bus trip to, to view all the historic places in North Glen Gary and South Glen Gary uh, municipal officials, and including a visibly pregnant Kelly. <laughs> and uh, well, uh, Alan and Jim, uh, Ian, sorry, Ian, and oh, Shannon, are people I remember with Kelly. But um, I would just, it's just that we've got a lot of the information. We've had a lot of input and people on the committee are, there's different areas of where you live in your area of expertise, but we've got quite a bit, Todd, to um, like giving us uh, 11 months in COVID times is really tricky to get in touch with people. For example, this committee hasn't met since for four years almost because of COVID and other things. So we're a little, uh, we're not up to date we're up to speed with what everybody's doing right now. However, Alan in Alexandria, the Glengarry County Archives has lots of information that we all use. Um, Williamstown has Glengarry Archives, the museum. We had, we've got lots, so 
will be limiting and what makes sense based on your location factors. Because I was trying to think of high traffic areas and where people could gather. And I kind of thought, okay, let's see Glenn Walter. Hmm. I don't know as much about Glenn Walter, for example. Someone mentioned the park there and I thought, well, that's great. Does that meet what other people are thinking? Um, you think of the bike trail that goes all along the front and you think, hmm, what? It's like there, there's lots of neat stuff. And as you also mentioned, we've got hundreds of plaques in North and South Glengarry because we are where it all began. That's my push, Todd, just so you can see. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off if you weren't. Uh, no, I'm, fine. I'm finished. Okay, thank you so much, Penny. And just before I pass it over to you, Ian, uh, comments I'd like to make that, yeah, you have done a lot of work and we do have, and I'm, I'm hoping, Todd, that you've seen the Glengarry route. So you have a sense of right all the the locations that are sort of yeah. already near and dear to our heart and i think i know when council when it was presented to uh, at council i know right away that was one of the concerns from what uh, and that's why they brought it to the committee is we have so many sites how do we pick the right locations and that's you know looking to the expertise of this group you know sort of maybe come up with some you know at least uh, preliminary recommendations um, as to what locations might be um, good. And uh, maybe folks aren't aware, but like to Penny's point about Glen Walter Park, the bike trail, the township does own a small piece of waterfront property there that's essentially across from the, the, the gas station uh, on the other side of the road. So I'm just throwing that out there in case people are not aware of that one. And also another item in terms of congregating locations that was brought up at council was uh, in terms of the, the Williamstown Fair grounds. It's not uh, technically municipal, but it is, you know, a high traffic area. And I'm certainly not suggesting these because these are baked in or these are top choices already, but I just wanted to give the committee who maybe hadn't had a chance to hear the discussion at council about this, that these were some things that were, um, were floated. So I can, uh, I'll pass it on to Ian now. Um, yes, I was just wondering, are you sort of looking for new places that aren't plaqued already? Like, you know, we've got the ruins that's in Raffles, you've got the wharf, and every, a lot of these older places have been plaqued. Are we looking for something that's, I'm going to say, a new old, a new old place? Like Penny was saying about the, the, the trails. When I came, what came to mind was the peanut, the old peanut line. Yes. You know, it's a, it's a trail there now for four wheelers or whatever. Or a walking trail, but that was built in 1914 as a railroad. Unfortunately, they're not using it anymore, but that could be one place that could be plaqued because it's, I don't think that there's any plaque there now, but if you're looking for a new, uh, a new, an old new place to plaque, well, like most of our heritage sites have been plaqued already. And I was just wondering if Maybe that's a long expression, a new old place to plaque, but it crosses the whole township from the Boundary Road to the Quebec border. So I mean, and it's just a place that a lot of, I think a lot of people use for why certain areas like around Cornwall, probably more so than down at the Quebec border, but it's used as a recreation trail. And I yes. think that's what we should be pushing. And I don't know if it should be plaqued or not, but that's just, it has, I don't think it's been plaqued already or designated, so maybe that's an idea. I had it number three on my list, oh. the peanut line. <laughs> so, Todd, can you comment um, on that perspective of something that doesn't already have a plaque? Uh, yeah, first off, I love that idea. That's a, a great idea. Um, I can be... <laughs> It accomplishes a lot of things. Number one, to your point, there are no plaques there now, so uh, we'd be able to uh, check that box. Uh, it's it's publicly owned, I presume, the peanut line by the, the yes. municipality. Uh, so we've got that uh, um, uh, to consider. And uh, also, there's lots of people. Uh, to your point, there's lots of people going and using the peanut line, uh, um, whether it's uh, four wheeling or hiking or whatever. Um, and so if that was if that was the ultimate decision of the committee and, and the township. 
uh, we can get to work quite quickly on that. Um, but uh, I'm not, not saying there may be other better ideas that we haven't discussed this morning, but that's the first good idea, <laughs> let's put it that way, uh, from our perspective. Uh, um, and uh, I think we could move quickly on a uh, plan like that. Thank you, Todd. Um, thank you. There's, and Alan, go ahead. Um, I wanted to ask just a couple of questions. One is, um, does this uh, program mean that when it's completed, there would be eight different, 18 different plaques uh, in, in SDNG? That's correct. That's uh, it, through you, uh, Madam Chair, that's uh, exactly what this would be. So there'll be 18 throughout the region. And another thing, a point that I'd like to make is this could be considered almost the first um, uh, the first shot across the bow, if you will, for this this project. Um, if there's an appetite or an opportunity for other organizations or even local municipalities to say, we want more of these plaques, uh, we can do that. So you could almost consider this the first phase. And if there's a determination that we want six plaques in South Glengarry, if there's money available to pay for that project, we could administer that on behalf of the, uh, the township. We would just have to have more meetings like this where we uh, determine what the plaques will be. Does it include um, Aquasosne uh, territory? Uh, not at this time, uh, only because we uh, um, we're we're talking because I'm interested. We're talking specifically about SDG. Oh, somebody's calling. Um, yeah, so we're just looking at SDG. There may be an opportunity later, um, and if. Uh, just very briefly, um, when I worked for Heart of the City in Cornwall, we had reached out to Aquasasne about expanding the tour to that uh, area. The, the talks were were positive, but it, we were waiting for more follow-up from Aquasasne, and, and it just didn't come to fruition. But there there could be an opportunity for that in the future. And, uh, oh, I was just going to go uh, one, one other thing. Um, would the um, um, plaques that are in place for the Cornwall uh, Canal history uh, are, are were, were they part of the uh, program that that kind of connects in with what's being proposed here? Yes, that's exactly what it is. So if you've seen those plaques along mm. front in Cornwall and downtown in, in Cornwall, that, that's exactly what we're talking about. Okay. Well, then just to uh, just uh, sum up, um, one thing I think then, just given what what one's doing and going to do, um, you know, it's probably going to be important to kind of look at the. A whole um, uh, the whole area of SD and G in terms of what what this might look like if these plaques are going to be distributed around the uh, uh, around the uh, uh, the area and um, just thinking quickly uh, uh, is that you know one thing that kind of strikes me is that there still is a a strong uh, history um, of these areas before uh, before uh, amalgamation and certainly. Uh, having a uh, a kind of uh, remembrance of, for example, uh, of, of, of Charlottenburg and Lahiel or Kenyon. I'm just speaking about uh, 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 Glengarry County. Uh, these these were kind of uh, uh, social communities and governmental communities for a very very long time. And even though it's hard to see the differences today, um, there there are differences that go back to those uh, those histories. You know? But anyway, just yes, throw that out right. as a, yes. uh, a, no. uh, a thought. Anyway, anyway, thank you for for your presentation. Thank you for the the, the comments, Alan. And one thing, maybe I'll build on that. Uh, your very good comment about working with Aquasasne. Um, likely, uh, we will, I mean, I, I foresee that there will be some sort of plaque or interpretive, um, uh, you know, physical interpretive material uh, to recognize the cairn um, that we will, you know, likely be doing in partnership with the Aquazazne. So um, that might be something that uh, I'm just I'm mentioning it because, again, it's, you know, just like how Penny started this. We already have a fabric. Of these of this information out there, and it's sort of how are we adding to it? I, and so that would be one that is probably going to be happening outside of the scope of this one. But so it's but it's important to know that I think it, it it's likely to be coming uh, in the you know in the short term horizon. It doesn't have um, much uh, uh, foot traffic out there, Seth. No, but and that's why it would be out. It's outside of uh, out of this one. This is likely through more. Or less, yeah. That, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing. I'm laughing. Yeah. So yeah. So it's outside of that, that outside of this one. But I just want to mention that it'll be probably be coming part of the the fabric soon enough. Um, so did anyone else uh, have a comment or like 
Todd, do you, do you want us to give you more specific suggestions now, or is there time for the committee to sort of, you know, brew on these ideas for a bit, if you can give a sense of that? Yeah, uh, really, we're, we're in your hands uh, at this point. So uh, once again, I'll reiterate the fact that I, I love the peanut line uh, idea. If that's ultimately where the, uh, the township wishes uh, to go, that would be great. But obviously, uh, there may be other uh, options uh, to consider. Uh, as I said at the beginning, our, our goal is to have uh, an idea of, of what these plaques could contain by the end of the month. And I'm not sure um, if uh, that requires a uh, some kind of council consent or assent to that uh, uh, that the recommendation, um, but yeah, so those are the timelines we're operating with. But I, I mentioned to Kelly uh, uh, prior to the, the meeting starting that, uh, you know, with COVID and, and everything happening the way it's, it's happening right now, um, uh, we, if I don't get it by the end of the month, if it's a couple of weeks into February, well, so be it. That'll just have to be the way it is. Okay, but so it is a fairly soon. I'll go ahead, Kelly. Yeah, sorry, I just was going to jump in um, from a procedural standpoint. So uh, essentially, I think there are, there are several ways we could proceed. Um, one being, you know, if the committee feels like you want to digest this information a little bit and think about it before making any recommendations, um, we could reconvene uh, maybe in a week's time um, before you know, making any recommendations. Um, ultimately, what will happen is whatever recommendations that the committee decides to make um, as the staff resource, I will then prepare a report and bring that to council who will then have the, you know, the final say in, in what we relay to Todd um, in terms of the, the sites that are selected. So really what it comes down to is, um, you know, is the committee at a point today where you feel like we could um, come to a consensus on some ideas or would you prefer um, to think about it, um, digest the information a little bit and reconvene to have another conversation before um, a recommendation is made to council? Thank you, Kelly. So, and we do have still 25 minutes today in, in, our, in what we had booked. So how, how does the committee feel? Do we, do we want to, I mean, certainly we should use the time we have today, but um, what's folks' initial impressions on, on do we want to have something by the end of this meeting in 25 minutes, or do we want to have something uh, we want to come back? I think meeting in a, in a week's time or so um, would, would be useful to add to what we can discuss today. Okay. All right. Thank you, Penny. I agree, Alan. Is it, that's what I was going to suggest. Probably many of us have a, a few locations and I have questions. Uh, for example, with the peanut line the, and the, the bike path and things like that, um, I wondered about, and this is relating to Alan, but on a different, in a different way, a theme for this new crop of uh, like you could take a recreational theme for the mm -hmm. or you could take I also I also really see the like Stephanie for example when I think of where Stephanie lives I know she lives on the fourth and then I have to think okay that's <laughs> uh, cedar it's not Fallowfield it's maple maple's the fourth yeah. And I, that's after years. Heron Road changed again on me and I'm not sure what it's called now, but you know, in another 20 years, I'll get it. It's very fond memory. Charlottenburg means a great deal to me, but not too much for a child in grade one. Uh, so that's, that would be neat to capture somehow. Could I ask Todd, um, would the Cornwall Canal uh, presentation be a, a, a good example of what one might be trying to achieve? I'm thinking that what you almost need to see, and you could start with one, is to kind of see what would be the key constituent photos that would be um, you know, part of this presentation. Um, so I'm just wondering whether the canal or whether there might be another one that you would be able to suggest and that we could see in terms of what are the component um, 
you know, photos and uh, information that would go into it. Yeah, uh, if, if you don't mind, I can I can share my screen now and, and show you some examples of, of, of plaques that we have. Yeah, please do, Todd. Okay. Uh, just bear with me while I find them. <laughs> also, like in the, the document that um, Kelly had circulated in advance of the meeting, there is one image of one plaque where they show the, you know, there's the major artistic rendering and then the, the historical imagery beside. So this is a plaque, uh, um, uh, sorry to cut you off, uh, Madam Chair. Um, uh, this is a, a plaque that will be uh, installed uh, near the, um, what used to be known as the Water Street Arena and then became the Sly Miller Arena and, and now it's been demolished. Um, and so uh, this gives you an idea of, uh, there's a, a central painting in this case. Um, there are at the top of this image, you can see some uh, old photographs of what the, um, uh, the arena used to look like. And obviously there's a, a bunch of verbiage uh, on here uh, depicting uh, uh, the rocket. Apparently he uh, played uh, at the Water Street Arena for a time. Uh, the Cornwall Royals won the uh, Memorial Cup uh, out of this arena um, uh, or playing out of that arena. And then obviously there's a reference to, to senior hockey as well. Um, if we can just, if I can get myself to go to the next one. Is the um, the United Counties uh, plaque. So uh, once again, it's it's a painting of, of what the the building used to look like uh, back in the day when it was a courthouse and a, and a jail. Uh, there, as I said, is is verbiage to describing that. And on the top, uh, there's a, a small photo, but obviously the building looks like now. And uh, there are other uh, photographs uh, um, on the right side depicting uh, the interior of the jail, and then I think that's the gallows and some other um, um, aspects of the uh, um, that plaque. Find another one. Uh, this is uh, what uh, would have been what is now, I should say, the, the Port Theater, but it used to be the, the Roxy Theater uh, back in the day. Um, most of these uh, central paintings are, are based off of historic photos. So this would have, painting would have been uh, focused or uh, would have been based off of a, a photo of the, the Roxy, uh, I think, back in the in the forties. Um, and uh, once again, it's, 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 you find a very similar theme here where we've got a, a photo of what the building uh, or the area looks like now, old photos of the interior and, and verbiage describing uh, the content and the, and the story behind the flag. I think I've got a couple more. Um, once again, this is a, a, the Woodlands in Santa Cruz and, and Lost Villages. This uh, painting is based off of an, uh, um, a historic photo. And uh, you can see once again the, the theme that uh, we've got a, a photo, of, I think that's at the top from the Lost Villages, um, another historic photo, and then uh, other uh, photographs down or along the, the right side. So I, I, I think I'm answering your question, Alan, but, but if I'm not, please let me know and, and uh, I'd be happy to answer it further. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Um, so if we were um, just following up um, uh, Ian's idea on, on peanut line, what you'd really be looking is kind of reminding people a, a bit about the uh, uh, the railway history uh, that would be represented in some you know um, uh, photos from the uh, from the era, right? That 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 would be correct uh, through you, Madam Chair. Is uh, uh, we would. Uh... <clears throat> find some individual, whether it's a member of the committee or, or perhaps uh, with the uh, uh, the county archives who would have this type of information to talk about uh, the peanut line. Hopefully there are some uh, uh, old photographs uh, depicting uh, that. Um, if there aren't, that's not a problem uh, because our artists uh, in a lot of cases uh, where there aren't historic photos or if we're trying to come up with something on uh, um, that's uh, organic or original, um, he will use his inspiration uh, um, uh, to get this uh, work done. And then about two paragraphs of text. For, uh, yeah. For when they're That's, right. Yeah. That's right. We've tried to let the, the artwork and the, the photographs really tell the story. Um, some, some plaques are, are, are only text. Um, and I would suggest to you, they probably don't have the engagement that, that something like this has. We, when we rolled this out in Cornwall, um, the, the response we got from the public was universally positive because it's, it's colorful. It's, it's not a black and white or a sepia tone uh, photo. It's, it's something that has a little splash of color and a little bit of a interpretation or artistic value because it's a painting. Um, uh, so yes, yeah, so it's, it's been very popular in Cornwall. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I mean, actually, to my, it, I, there's quite a bit of text. Like, I don't know how many words there are, but 
there is quite a bit of uh, text on these ones. And the, the, the arena one also, there was a substantial amount of text. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe, um, Todd, if you don't mind stopping sharing the screen, great. So, well, I mean, some things that I'm hearing from the community is, you know, there's, there's, you know, what is the overall theme of, uh, you know, where the project is going, and, you know, the, that, you know, there's, there's different ways of view, viewing that. You know, there could be a recreational theme, there could be uh, a historical theme, but sort of like, um, how do I? It's much more of a complex idea, but sort of the idea of like our old, the older places of you know government that didn't uh, or or names that didn't exist uh that that no longer exist but that existed prior to amalgamation that that's a another theme as well um that could be explored um the, and seeing this are there other um locations that came up in folks minds either in terms of like on a recreational theme or on sort of the our uh, older location name themes. Transportation. Transportation. Which takes okay. in your peanut line and your can, it hooks up to your canal system. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What about, uh, are there going to be um, is it QPR uh, uh, codes that people can? Um, uh, QR codes. Q, QR codes, are they built into these plaques? So uh, the uh, long and short of it is there are, and I, I just didn't get into it because uh, to save time, but uh, there are uh, plenty of uh, projects that we will um, include in this, uh, this project after the, the work is completed. They include um, uh, geocaching. We will then, uh, include an element uh, for that. There'll be a, an interactive GIS um, app on the county website that you'll be able to go to and, and see, uh, oh, I want to see the plaques in North Dundas. Where are they? And what do they depict? And, and how can I get them? Um, so all that will be, will be tied in uh, as well. Uh, really, it's, it's uh, local municipalities and, and uh, uh, kind individuals like yourselves are, are really gold for us at this point in terms of uh, gathering content for the plaques. But it's um, at this point, because it's early days, we haven't had conversations with um, with other municipalities to talk about a collaborative approach to, you know, well, South Bend is going to do X and, and South Stormont's going to do Y and, and how do those mesh together? Um, it's difficult in, in dealing with, uh, at this point, dozens of people and, and 18 plaques to, to try and coordinate that. But I, I think when it's, it's completed, there will be the, those synergies because we're all basically talking about local history and, and SDG and, and trying to get these stories out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it is important, like when this was presented to the council, I think there was a, a great uh, recognition that we have many sites and that we could probably come up with many, many places to put these kind of plaques. And I, I mean, obviously can't speak for a council decision before it's made, but um, I think there would be an appetite, you know, to expand it beyond the, the three that we would be selecting at this point or the three that the committee would be, um, you know, recommending. And I, I don't think the committee necessarily has to limit themselves to three recommendations. Um, you know, if there isn't like a real clear consensus on that, I think, you know, providing council with more than three is, is perfectly acceptable too, but also to keep that in mind that, you know, th this could be built upon. So just because something doesn't make it quote unquote for this first cut, that doesn't necessarily mean it couldn't be built upon if this is viewed as a really successful um, initiative. Um, do we have any thoughts on something going more towards the north? of the township? That was just, I know that's one. The only, uh, the only thing but, I can think of was during the war, there was two flax mills in South Hungary here, one at North Lancaster and one at the Norman. The buildings are still there and the farmers were go growing flax, to, which they used in parachutes during the Second World oh. War. And that, I mean, that's an agricultural theme on it, plus, uh, you know, there, there was a big industry during the Second World War for parachutes, which farmers grew flax for, to uh, make parachutes for the air, uh, paratroopers. So, I mean, I, I don't, the buildings are still there. They don't even look like factories anymore, but there's a little bit of history there, which is probably unique to this area. Mm -hmm. Agriculture certainly could be uh... Uh, could be an idea, you know, I mean, uh, uh, Lancaster, uh, 
you know, it's probably one of the most uh, was intense, the, uh, intense areas in, in uh, you know, in Ontario. And I, I know McGill uses a number of the large uh, farms, um, uh, you know, in, in Lancaster for, uh, you know, for class demonstrations and that. And, uh, but having the, uh, uh, the remembrance of really what agriculture was like in more traditional times built into that could be an interesting, uh, uh, you know, theme. The other thing on agriculture was there was the McCray, who there was mm -hmm. a book written on them who apparently owned over a thousand cheese factories. There was lots of cheese factories pretty near in every corner uh, in South Hungary here or, and all over the, the country. So that's a, maybe another agricultural thing that the history of mm -hmm. yeah. uh, cheese making. You know, Ge geocaching all the old cheddar, uh, cheddar cheese was put in 90 pound blocks and shipped by the time of England. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, it's just I don't know if it's history or not, but it's part, mm -hmm. part of our makeup. Yeah. On that theme of cheese, Ian, are there any locations where there would be high traffic? I know that being one of the, the goals uh, of this. I, I don't know. There's the only cheese factory that I know, the building is still there. Is, at the corner of County Road 18 and 23, and it's well surrounded by uh, by uh, trees. And the other cheese factory where we used to ship milk was in North Lancaster, which is just at the southeast, at the east end of North Lancaster. I think they grow uh, marijuana there now. But after the cheese factory closed, there was a slaughterhouse now. Now apparently they grow marijuana. And the building's still there. So, you know, but there was hundreds of them. Many many people live in cheese old cheese factories in in, in Glengarry today. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, though, when I was mentioning earlier about going towards the north, I was just wondering if there's something like in the Green Valley, um, kind of more in that area, if there might be just recognizing recognizing that it's a population center where there would be some traffic if there might be something there, but nothing. I can't say that I have something specific coming. Well, to I mind, can't think but. of anything in Green Valley either. Yeah. Well, the, the one thing is it, it, it was a, a major uh, 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 railway uh, center in terms of uh, um, uh, the feed the feed industry and uh, um, and there are you know a lot of uh, again if you go back to the uh, uh, to the railway theme you yeah. know certainly Green, uh, Green Valley and other areas uh, you know Peanut Line can connect in with that. Uh, uh, with that part of the history, and and basically what's happening with the railroad today, uh, just you know, uh, CP has just uh, bought out uh, Kansas City Southern, so they they're running off from Montreal, Vancouver, and then all the way down past uh, Mexico City uh, today. You know, so it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting part of uh, uh, of the evolution, and also the the via in Alexandria is really part of a project that's going to connect um, Quebec City to Toronto, but also Biden's big package has, has an opportunity to connect that line right to Chicago. And uh, so, so rail is, uh, you know, if you look down uh, into the future, uh, this is, we're, we're at an interesting uh, interconnection in terms of rail. So if one wants to tell some of the story about that, it could be. Uh, no, yeah. very it's interesting that you mentioned that. It made, it made me think of one of the tea talks I went to at the museum where I think it was um, Catherine uh, Sangster Humphreys, who I think she, she, she did a presentation that I think her dad was meant to have given. But I remember one of the, the pieces was about rail and about through, and I, 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 the, the name of it right now, I don't have it, but that was specific, like they're through, through Bainesville. So I, that's, that was called uh, you know, maybe, Mauguson. pardon me? That was called the Mauguson. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, thank you. We call them Augustine. Huh. But an, another one is County Road 18 through the, used to be called the King's Highway. At one time, that was, I believe, the, the main road between Toronto and uh, Toronto and Montreal before <laughs> the old, like, basically the old number two opened up. And the, but I think on some titles, land titles, the um, the King's Highway, which is now County Road 18, was used in their descriptions. Thank you, thank you, Ian. So, oh, Todd, um, go ahead. Just I want to be conscious of time because um, 
Uh, I know that uh, we just have a few more minutes left. So go ahead, Todd, and then maybe we'll, we'll, we'll transition to next steps in terms of preparing for a meeting for next week. Go ahead, Todd. Sorry, I just have to remember, remember to unmute myself. Um, so, uh, um, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just leave you with uh, an example at the end here. Um, and I'm sorry to keep focusing on the peanut line, but it's, it's generating, a lot, generating a lot of ideas. Um, so if we were talking about three plaques uh, included at the, the, the peanut line along the, the trail system, um, I just uh, very quickly scratched out three potential concepts. Um, one would be a painting uh, depicting the train line uh, uh, back in the day with the train actually on the, the track and, and, and kind of showing what it, it looked like uh, when it was a, a rail system. We could then develop a, a second plaque that would uh, depict the rail system's connection to community and economic spin-offs. So uh, presumably this, this was a popular uh, line uh, with uh, passengers and commodities uh, moving across the uh, the township and, and obviously that that spun off other um, uh, industry and other links to, to the community so uh, we could come up with a, a plaque that, to, to depict that and then um, I'm not sure how long it's been a recreation facility can somebody answer that question for me uh, the township has had it now is it is it 10 or 20 years I forget which number it was was it 20 2009 oh I should know Prior to that, was it used as a, uh, was it just used as a hiking trail because it wasn't a rail line anymore and the, and the public just kind of <laughs> found a use for it and, and did that? And the reason why I'm asking is because you could create a third plaque to that end, that uh, the, depicting the switch over from a rail line to now a, a, essentially a rec facility. Yeah. Where people, uh, um, you know, enjoy some some time in the outdoors, and we could create another plaque like that. Those are just ideas, but I, I just wanted to give you an idea of a concept that perhaps you could consider that if you were going to do something either at the, the peanut line or elsewhere, you can create little stories on these plaques to depict those different chapters, if you will, of, of that little story. Um, and that was really the only the point I wanted to make is that you can come up with ideas for a specific location um, and uh, essentially it would be our job then to liaise with, with uh, perhaps Alan um, at Glengarry County Archives to, uh, I think his name is Alan, uh, to determine if we have uh, photographs and other materials that depict that. Okay, great. Thank, thank you, Todd, for that. And that's an interesting thought that I hadn't gotten to me that you could do all three plaques uh, related to the peanut line or along the peanut line. So that's, uh, that. thank you for, for that uh, additional thought. So um, in terms of next steps, uh, our, in terms of another meeting, our folks, so folks are good with meeting in a, in a week? Does that work um, mm -hmm. for most people's schedules? Yes. Uh, okay. I'm, hope, I'm frantically trying to double check my work schedule here, but normally, normally this time on a Friday uh, works for me as well. And in, in terms of what we should be, I mean, come prepared with, I mean, I get, um, I think, well, I mean, I, you know, to have some ideas brew and um, perhaps come prepared with some, some more concrete thoughts on, uh, on sort of a vision that, uh, you know, you would like, that, that you would like to propose or, and then certainly if members of the committee, you know, you, you can uh, reach out to Kelly or Todd or each other if you want to have some more, um, you know, some more information that way. Uh, and we can even share some of this over, you know, it could be shared over email as well so that, um, you know, we can be more productive in the, uh, in the committee meeting when we actually deliberate uh, on the ideas themselves. So does that, um, does that sound reasonable? Mm -hmm. So Kelly, does that, so does this time again next week work from your perspective? Yeah, it works for me and uh, the timeline works well uh, also for our public notification process. So um, what I can do following this meeting is I'll send, um, send out a meeting invite for next Friday, same time, 11 o'clock. Um, Actually, can we do 10? Is it a problem? I just, I, I, I realize now that the 21st, I actually have something at 11. Can we do 10? Would that work with other members of the committee? Is there anyone it doesn't work for? It do, uh, I think Penny shaking her head no. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, Penny. Okay. Um, how about how, how how about 1 p.m.? Sure. Does, does 1 p.m. not work for anyone? 
good. Okay, good. Yeah, let, let's do 1 p.m. then. Okay. Perfect. So I'll send out the uh, Zoom link and a meeting invite for one o'clock uh, next Friday. And uh, I'll likely send the agenda out on uh, on Wednesday, 48 hours in advance. Um, and Todd, would you like to uh, to join us again for our next meeting? Uh, yeah, I'd be happy to. Yes. Perfect. So I'll send you the invite as well. Okay, perfect. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for, for joining us. Uh, thank you for your your excellent, uh, your thoughtful, you know, comments and ideas already so far. And I really look forward to resuming this in a week's time. Um, if I could have someone to move to adjourn the meeting. Thank you, right. Ian. And I think Alan, are you seconding that? Uh, I, I don't think we need a seconder, but <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes we say, you know what? Thank you. Sometimes we second, sometimes we don't. I'm never entirely clear on when we do and when we don't, but everyone is in favor with adjourning. Perfect. Thank you so much. Everybody.